Thank you, Chairpersons. Good morning, everyone. And I would at the outset like to thank Team Diabetes India for inviting me and uh, congratulations on a great success of this conference. Uh, so, Dr. Navneet has already uh, given us a background about insulin intensification and I have a, little, a topic which is almost in continuation that is reintroducing SU for patients who are already on insulin therapy in type 2 diabetes patient. I would like to clarify there is no conflict of interest and uh, so we can just start by saying that uh, we are just discussing a case if there is a mis this is a hypothetical case of course there are various clinical aspects into it so mr a a 48 year old male with sedentary lifestyle diabetic since 5 years a1c of 9.8 on glimepiride 2 mg metform uh, metformin 2 g and uh, cetagliptin 100 mg uh, bmi of 27 current smoker and had right leg cellulitis was admitted with septicemia so this is a patient with, which all of us see in our uh, clinical practice. And then what will you do with pa this patient? Obviously admit, start IV fluids, antibiotics, influ uh, ins insulin infusion is started. And then slowly you can shift them to uh, basal bolus depending on the blood glucose levels. And then uh, initially when you start on infusion, you tend to stop uh, oral antidiabetic agents. But once the patient is stable, start on basal bolus. But eventually, what will be the plan at discharge? That is what is our concern. Now, when we are managing diabetes, what is most important? HbA1c less than 7. Why is it important? Because it reduces diabetes-related complications. And A1c less than 7 results in reduced microvascular complications, reduced long-term CVD rates, and reduction in diabetes-related mortality. Also, it reduces diabetes-related cost. There is 22% lower diabetes medical cost and 28% lower pharmacy cost. So overall, 25% reduction in cost happens if patient is having A1C target of less than 7 for at least more than one year. Now, we have a good armamentarium of drugs available in last two decades, but old is gold and there is no agent as effic efficient as insulin. Insulin is the treatment option which provides maximum A1C reduction. So obviously in these cases, insulin is going to be drug of choice. But what happens in type 2 diabetes patient, when do we start insulin? In those patients who are symptomatic hyperglycemia or have ketosis, there are catabolic symptoms, organ dysfunction, A1C more than 10 or RBS more than 300. Patient is pregnant or planning pregnancy or there is any hospitalization or any surgery. So in these type 2 patients, you will like to start insulin. The management goal in patients uh, for surgery or in hospitalization is ob obviously optimization of metabolic control and this again has to be individualized based on severity of diabetes, their usual diabetes standard regimen, the level of glycemic control and type of surgical procedure. So if the patient is for a minor surgery, you can just stop the OHA previous night or if the patient is having a major surgery, you can shift to basal bolus. So depending on what type of surgery you need, you uh, have to cater to the uh, patient's need. But whenever you start patient on insulin, as Dr. Navneet also said earlier, the patient has is not always comfortable he is always opting for better options why because there is pain there is weight gain there are injection site reactions there is lipodystrophy and there may be a heavy uh, you know physical mental as well as fi financial burden on the patient patient needs to monitor the blood glucose also regularly and the risk of hypoglycemia is relatively high in those with multiple injections so that is why you uh, may think that the patient should shift to oral agents, making their life more comfortable and reducing the painful procedure of multiple injections as well as hypoglycemia, which is induced because of insulin. Studies have shown that rate of switching from insulin injection to oral agent, approximately 50% in those who had maintained insulin therapy for a relatively longer period of time. They were still successful in switching to oral agents from insulin. 
So when do you do this? When do you plan transition or reintroduction of SU back into patient who are already on insulin? When the blood glucose levels are stable, there is no ketoacidosis, there are no serious complications, there is minimal tissue damage post-surgery. Patient is a normal diet. He is not on like RT feeds or parental nutrition and pregnancy is not planned. So these are the uh, patients, if they are fulfilling this criteria, you can think of adding an oral agent in patient who is already on insulin. Now, what oral agents? Again, ADA ASD guidelines get updated every year and they still focus on a individualized and a patient-centered approach. And we have a lot of options, but again, we say SU is still the best and we and our guidelines also say that if the cost is a consideration, SU should be considered. So when uh, we are patient is already on insulin, what is the role about SU? So what does the guidelines say? The international guidelines like ADA, ASD or ACE recommend that SU should be withdrawn with diabetic patients who are receiving either premis um, or basal uh, or bolus regimen or pre uh, premix insulin to prevent hypoglycemia and weight gain associated with this combination therapy. But does anybody think the other way around? Do you all do that? But when the patient is on insulin, we do not stop SU completely. So, but what is the concern? Why do they say that you need to stop SU? Because our concern about the oral hypoglycemic agents are always the efficacy, the durability, beta cell exhaustion, hypoglycemia, cardiac safety and cost. Now, if we consider efficacy, we know SU is a golden molecule. Uh, it has uh, multiple actions. Main action, of course, is increasing insulin secretion from the beta cell, but it also has minor action on decreasing the glucagon release, extra pancreatic effect on uh, peripheral tissues, and it also decreases the hepatic glucose output. Uh, again, as insulin is the gold standard, the next best option in reduction of HbA1c is going to be SU. So if we compare all the oral agents that are available, the HbA1c reduction after metformin is going to be the highest with sulfonylurea. So there is an average fall of FBG by 60 to 70 milligram and fall in A1c up to 0.5 to 2 percent of HbA1c. Now, uh, UKPDS is the largest trial and it has shown us that beta cell exhaustion with SU is a myth. There is no such concept because the diabetes is a progressive disease and there is going to be a progressive beta cell failure. It is not SU which is responsible. It is the glucotoxicity, the lipotoxicity which is responsible for the progressive beta cell failure. And UKPD has also shown as there is no solid evidence uh, by that by use of uh, SU there is a beta cell exhaustion. So again the risk of hypoglycemia with the newer SUs, the risk of hypoglycemia is 6.5 times lower. So compared to glibenclamide, gl uh, glimepiride or uh, glycolazide will have a lesser incidence of hypoglycemia. So that also can be taken care of. Then the second concern is weight. Uh, there is a paper where they have a study uh, which was published in Diabetes, Obesity and Metabolism Journal. And they have shown that there is no significant difference in weight gain in people who were on SU med combination uh, from the start till 5 years they have followed up. And we were able to achieve the strict glycemic control, but no significant change in weight was seen in this group. So that concern also is taken care of. Uh, again, uh, when we compare the CV safety, and uh, uh, it was seen that uh, glimepiride and glycolazide are associated with lower risk of all-cause mortality and CV-related mortality compared to the older SUs. So in short, modern SUs are the panache in diabetes care. So they have a good glycemic, uh, anti-hyperglycemic effect, good glycemic control, and they also have extra pancreatic effects. They reduce the uh, insulin clearance in liver, uh, increase the level of adiponectin, improves the insulin sensitivity. It also has pleiotropic effects like antioxidative effects, anti-inflammatory effects, and anti-angiogenic uh, effects. They are also cardio-safe, and they do not interfere with the ischemic preconditioning. And therefore, modern SUs can be considered as choice of treatment of diabetic patients because of the safety, efficacy, and the extra benefit, uh, extra pancreatic benefits that are there on endocrine and the metabolic aspects, along with the low cost of the therapy. 
there are various uh, global evidences that are available so the safest that is the southeast asian federation studies also recommend use of su especially in our patients because again asian phenotype is different and we have a better results with su met there are uh, the international task force guidelines also recommend that due to the unique characteristic such as increased efficacy safety and fewer episodes of hypoglycemia and weight neutralizing effect modern SUs can be used in managing the diabetic patients and there are various trials like uh, GRADE also. So again the latest evidence one such study is uh, the, the JADE which is a real world usage of sulfonylurea uh, in Asian patients using uh, uh, oral agents. So this is a Asian registry where they have studied the type 2 diabetic patients and the oral glucose lowering drugs that were used and it was seen that almost 60 percent 59.4 percent people were using SU. So SU is definitely a drug of choice especially in the Asian patients and uh, the uh, glucodynamic and the glucocracy in type 2 diabetes management also shows that uh, modern SU uh, can be used as according to the international expert group also. There is another uh, study called as GRADE, which has uh, assessed the efficacy as well as uh, the safety in uh, type 2 diabetic patients. They have studied uh, four modalities that we are using. So they uh, involved participants who has diabetes without CV complications and compared the efficacy of Glargin U100 glimipiride, liraglutide and cetagliptin. So these were the good regimens that were available and they have compared the efficacy of all these four agents uh, in achieving the A1C level as well as protecting from micro as well as macrovascular complications and it was seen that all four had a, a equivalent effect and including their effect on risk of hypoglycemia and therefore it confirms that older generic or biosimilar low cost agents uh, still have role in treatment of persons with early type 2 diabetes who are at low cardiovascular risk. Now again coming back to topic what is the role of insulin and sulfonylurea therefore so when insulin is added to, uh, I mean sorry when SU is added to insulin what happens is there is increase in endogenous insulin secretion and it possibly also exerts some extra pancreatic actions on muscle and liver and thereby helps in improving the glycemic control and decreasing the daily insulin requirement. Uh, who will respond? Which patients are going to be good to put on SU? A subset of patients who are mild to moderately obese, they have a uh, some uh, endogenous insulin secretory reserve so maybe diabetes of a shorter duration and are having a poor glycemic control A1C more than 10 percent despite twice daily insulin and these people may show significant improvement in glycemic regulation or they may also have decrease in insulin dose. So evidence suggests that addition of SU to insulin in patients who are uncontrolled reduces the insulin dose by 20 to 30 percent and it also avoids hypoglycemia. Now there was a real world observational study about this, uh, Dr. Prasanna Kumar has uh, uh, done this study and it was a retrospective multi-center study, 347 centers were involved, observational study and 7000 patients were included in the study and it showed that uh, they had two type of patients, one who were on insulin and then they were added SUMET, this was 16.7% uh, and those patients who were on SUMET and not controlled on insulin, 84% patients almost. And in both the groups, they had shown that there was a significant A1C decrease uh, up to 1.3% and they were able to reduce the insulin dose in these patients. Again, they have shown that there was excellent efficacy and tolerability in this uh, group. So when the glimmy metformation was added to the insulin combination. So de definitely this has a greater uh, use in our patient and how do we use it? We either start with as Dr. Agrawal had already said, either you start a bedtime insulin and add a daytime sulfonylurea, this is how it is going to help in decreasing the hepatic glucose production and increasing the peripheral uptake and therefore improving the glycemic control. Again, the International Task Force uh, uh, recommends uh, you can add modern SU either uh, with basal insulin or if the patient is not controlled, uh, you are pa putting patient on premix, you can add o uh, SU at the other major meal. And if the patient is already on twice a day premix yet not controlled, you can still add SU as a third uh, dose. So you can add it before lunch if you're giving uh, premix twice a day like before breakfast and before dinner. But what are the caution? Again, initiate 
low dose su titrate after 2 to 4 weeks modern su should be preferred uh, like uh, that means glimepiride and glycolizide and uh, sorry uh, regular monitoring should be done especially if the patient is on insulin and you are going to titrate the dose of insulin also and patient may be able to stop insulin if the patient is well controlled. Now, do not restart uh, SU if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, there is end stage liver or kidney disease, patient is breastfeeding or planning pregnancy and by chance you find out later on that the patient is having LADA. So I would just like to end the slide, it is not moving. Uh, so basically you can add SU in patients who are not controlled and uh, patient centered approach is needed. SU has their own effect. Uh, it reduces the go uh, cost and improves the glycemic outcome. But patient selection, drug and dose selection and patient education and empowerment is very important when you're planning a reintroduction of SU in type 2 diabetic patients. Thank you.